What's up, guys, and uh, welcome back to another episode of Ups and Downs with your host, Nantals. Join me as always in this video, of course, is our good friend and buddy, Liam, man. What's up? Welcome to the stream. How's it going, guys, and welcome to part three. Part three. Yes, guys, if you are tuning into part three, definitely check out our playlist right now of part one and part two if you haven't already done so. Now, the reason why we're doing this is, of course, the upcoming structure decks here in the collective where we're going to be unboxing the two structure decks from Obelisk the Tormentor and, of course, Cypher the Sky Dragon. Now, of course, those two hasn't been featured in any of the episodes so far. But, of course, it still talks about some of the powerfulness that is the Egyptian God cards. Now, of course, that comes out later in the month of June. So definitely, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe in this channel if you guys are hyped for that unboxing. Now, of course, in this episode, obviously, ups and downs, we're going to be talking about the good bits, which will give it an up. And the bad bits will give it a down. And, of course, this episode is part three known as the mystery of the hieroglyphic text in the Japanese version. And of course, the, the mind games part three or mind versus Merrick part three um, in the English version. So with that being said, uh, let's kind of talk about a little bit of the episode as we roll into the opening cinematics. Now, you had a comment earlier when, when we were watching the, uh, I guess, the recap of this episode. What was your comment on this, Leo? I honestly had a bit of a chuckle with how quick they put it together, but they put it a together in a way that's funny. It, it, was yeah. a gl it was serious for a minute, and then when you see it skipped through towards the cliffhanger at the previous episode, Mm -hmm. it, you just see it going one way and it's in a comical style kind of dark but still comical yeah yeah like like merrick he's like he's like he's like super serious like oh yes i will be the best one you can't stop me like i am forever the best forever forever like it's just so over the top that it was like it's just super funny and with that of course brief cinematic moment we're gonna give that one an up not a, not a gold enough, but an up nonetheless. Obviously, as the episode comes into its own, uh, we get into a little more of the uh, scene between, of course, the fight scene is continuing between Merrick and Mai here. Obviously, we have that golden snitch that we, we referred to that's been summoned by Mai in the previous episode, but she doesn't know how to activate it. It's just kind of stuck there in the air. And then um, there's this whole drawn out explanation for Merrick, like, oh, you have to read the text. You're I'm from the uh, royal heritage and like, I, I'm awesome and stuff like that. You're you're obviously not awesome to a certain degree. Pretty much that's what he said in layman's terms. He kept going on and on. Like to me personally, it gets to a point where like it's building suspense. That's great, but that's just way too much. It's like, it's like long drawn out. Like the the very first segment before it goes to that commercial break or an ad break, whatever. Like pretty much they didn't do anything. They just they just talked. Um, like how do you feel about that? To me, that could be that could be a slight down. But maybe, I don't know, how, how do you feel about that? I would give it a sincere down, just purely because there comes a point where this, the time they put into the facial reactions and stuff, you know, they extend them a bit too much. Mm -hmm. And in, in all fairness, this guy has been bragging on about it and harping on about the Egyptian royal heritage. Pretty much, he's like the keeper of something uh, from, from the pharaoh, but for the most part, like they could just went on with it but i get it they're trying to extend this episode as far as they can that's just how they did it but there was a few moments on there that was pretty funny like as soon as the episode like started they were talking about oh my god it's a giant ball uh, it's like humongous it's like the whole i guess the whole uh, party of there was like confused and like like how are you going to summon it blah blah and then kaiba's over there in the corner like just smiling it's like this is, this is awesome He's enjoying, enjoying life. As a very tactical person would, just sitting back on the sidelines and seeing how things go. You know, it, it does play into it further later on in the episode. Yep. And you talked about this as well. Um, let's flip to that scene. Yeah, so th this is the scene with, with, with Kaiba and I just smiling, ha having the time of his life, just so enthralled by this. Like, I, like he's so interested, like, oh, like, like how you activate it. What's the power? What can it do? Obviously, it is the first time it's ever been summoned. There was a time it was summoned, I think in a previous part, but I think it's the first time that like, Kaiba has seen it personally, but always correct me in the comments down below. Obviously watching these episodes in like random order and we're not watching it from like from previous like it's, uh, episodes. So if there's anything that we might've mixed around, obviously we're going by a lot of this, but through memory. So obviously correct this in the comments if we are, I guess mis misremembering some stuff, but um, from my from, from what I remember anyway is uh, I think it's the first time it was ever summoned, and Kaiba of course and everyone else is like 
in interested of how this is going to actually play out. So yes, uh, this is the card that they were talking about, the inscription. Uh, Liam, kind of walk us through some of this, especially the reactions from everyone around. When they didn't realize it was going to be as straightforward as they realized, then Marek was bigging himself up in the fact that it's going to be a card that's not for anyone to be just using. It reveals itself in a secret code of text that only people from like protectors of the pharaoh's tomb or royalty basically yeah like the pharaoh's kind of light like an, an ancient dead language that would mean absolutely nothing to the likes of joey taya my you know because none of their heritage could be traced back to ancient egyptian times it's funny you mention that too because like uh, even um, they, they had a reference to Pegasus as well in this episode where even he knew about this but he's still like I guess uh, he, they put in like almost like invisible ink or something I don't know how they did it where when the card is actually summoned this text will actually pop up and I, for some reason Pegasus knew about that so he actually did it just like that. He was mentioning kind of like what you were talking about the, um, the generation passed pass down where he was referring to Kaiba and Yugi and of course himself having some kind of like tied to the ancient heritage and um, somehow they can read it. I don't know how, but I guess like when it's in the moment, maybe they can actually maybe inscribe it somehow. But the the whole entire chant, by the way, like, it was like kind of a almost like a like a nursery rhyme corny like like rhyme thing. Like uh, I'm going to summon you so that way you can help me win, you know, almost as generic as that in some degree like i guess in hindsight i'm going to give this in general scene an up um but for the most part uh it, it could have been a little bit more i guess i guess not so nursery rhyme like if that makes any sense like uh, like do you, do you agree i completely agree with you it's a teen rated anime that's a bit more darker you know it's it has leeway it has room to have that deeper undertones. It does get darker though, but we'll definitely talk about that as the episode goes on. But yeah, continue. With having that leeway of the overtone of being able to have that wiggle room, it should be it should be used to its maximum potential. But it, um, I guess the point of it is it, it, it drives the, uh, the point across um, pretty much to the T. Like, yes, you need to be somehow related to the ancient um, civilization to actually understand it. Because it is, is in, in, it's not just in hieroglyphic, but it's in a like a special font or text uh, that only royals like uh, will understand from the hieroglyphic. Like it's its own special code, I guess, if you want to call it. But moving on to the next scene. So in this scene, Mai pulls the gravity bind card to set down on the field. She kind of hopes that this will protect herself as a bit of an insurance buffer. And unfortunately, after she ends her turn, it becomes a complete and utter massacre. If you guys recall, in the previous episode, she she sacrificed all Harpy's um, sisters, basically, to summon this. Three monsters for that one. And it left her pretty much wide open for an attack. So she can't set another monster down because she already set it and sacrificed it. That's kind of like the whole point of why she uh, had the Winged Dragon of Raw. And she assumed that this card will at least protect her life points. But it looks like uh, Merrick here summoned another one of those like, I forget what they're called, like chain link monsters. I forget the name of it right now from the top of my head. But I guess when that card is summoned, it, gets, it has an effect where it destroys any set card. And of course that set card was Gravity Vine. Not only that, but what else did it do, I guess? It did some next level stuff because this is the Shadow Realm and she has no idea that uh, these cards actually have the ability to restrain their opponent so somehow somehow right finally starting to believe that she's actually in a dire situation of being held against her will by <laughs> Merrick's card she, her mind can't even process this right now it's kind of sad but savage at the same time like it's another nod towards Merrick I go so far as to say bad boy attitude you know mm -hmm. he's He's certainly shocking her and also very much stressing Joey and <laughs> Yugi. Yeah, good, good point, good point. Uh, as we roll into the next scene though, of course with that restraint, now we move on to the actual summoning of, of course, the Wing Dragon of Raw by saying that nursery chant that we talked about earlier. And of course, now she's defenseless. No monsters, no traps, no, ma no magic cards set. Like, 
She's vulnerable for a direct attack. And here it is, of course, the beauty, the wing dragon of raw. It's us. It's not my personal favorite Egyptian god card, but of course it is an iconic one. Uh, what's your opinion on the a god card? It's a golden dragon and it looks mm -hmm. like it's chrome gold. Uh, I'm a fan of gold. I like gold. <laughs> Definitely. It's it's just it's just one of those things that because it's gold is it's so sought after, especially in the uh, ancient Egyptian times, significant thing being a big golden dragon. You know, no. even in many cultures. Obviously, like uh, this whole entire s scene here, well, we'll definitely give this one up because it was pretty dang epic. Obviously, is the uh, one of the first moments we get to see and glimpse into the Winged Dragon of Ra. Uh, the one thing I will comment on, it's not really a down for me, but uh, the fact that obviously Mizo went to summon this card, so technically she's a, she has the ownership of it, but because Merrick knows the scripture by heart and recited it, it kind of switched ownership to him. I guess storyline purpose it makes sense, but of course, as a game, it makes sense because technically he didn't summon it. But that's what, that's besides the point. It's not a down, but it's just a comment. He okay, said, "Give these back, sees." <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, Liam actually talked about the tattoo earlier in this episode. So uh, kind of t walk us through this one as well. Liam. So after all this gloating, he finally reveals after having choice words with Yugi that he is a bearer of the. Pharaoh's secret, which is a inscription that is on the back, that is tattooed on his back, where um, a, family, a certain family is in, has been given the heritage of the good long chunk of a uh, family's generation, and the very fact that uh, he's now got the opportunity. I'm sure many of his ancestors are screaming out, "Yeah, woo, he's doing it!" But mm -hmm. you know, he he. He finally reveals it, and everyone, well, especially Yugi, he he has a while well, he, because he's still in his uh, grown-up Yugi form. He has a moment with his inside self, thinking, "I need to know what's what written on his mm -hmm. back," because exactly. it's allegedly the Pharaoh secret. And I believe, because um, if you if you if you guys recall, um, a lot of his memories has been like white, like he doesn't remember anything about his past or anything like that and of course this w code whatever that he has in his back is supposed to unlock that memory of him um, in his past and of course Merrick supposed to be the key bearer of this burden now refuses because now he thinks that he can actually use that power against the pharaoh and become I guess higher than the pharaoh because he, he was pretty much a subordinate to the pharaoh so now he has the opportunity to I guess surpass the pharaoh himself. So this entire interaction, I really I enjoyed the little backstory here. So I'm gonna give this this whole scene up as well. Absolutely agree with you. Absolutely agree. It, it kind of something that you weren't expecting either. You know, it's it's when he's talking about some sort of uh, power of the gods. You know, he, to those that don't believe him, you know, he seems like a crackpot. But to those <laughs> like Yugi that have some inkling. Even he had no idea that he was the secret bearer from the family bloodline that was entrusted with it. In this whole scene though, uh, it gave a little bit of a like, almost, is trying to have some empathy for him, but at the same time he's just so evil that it, it's hard to feel empathy towards him, but it's just a little cutscene here of him like, you know, holding that burden for so long. Like he's the, he's the key bearer for, for the Pharaoh's power, but like now he's trying to take control of it in his own hands. And um, it adds a bit of a motive, which is why I like the scene so much. It was a quick synopsis. It was there, it was explained, it was gone. It was nowhere near as drawn out as daddy issues. <laughs> it, it, dude, it, it wasn't as drawn as the opening suspense scene before it even like, uh, summoned um, the Wing Jang and Raw like, effectively. So at least that, it was shorter than that. The formula was right. <laughs> so in this next scene here, obviously Mai has no defenses, no magic, no traps, as we mentioned earlier. So obviously, direct attack should be an automatic win. But obviously, different because we're in the Shadow Realm, which means when this attack goes into where it's supposed to, it's just it's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt quite a bit. So what did Joey end up doing, Liam, as we roll to this? Joey finally became the hero he was always wanted to be. 
-hmm. he decides that he's going to tag team with Yugi in trying to save her from the imminent attack that is Merrick's ultimate attack oh, yes. and in it's a very drawn out attack though because <laughs> they have to they have to include time where Joey runs to try and pull the power out of the uh, system the, the wing dragon bro he needs to power up first it's, it's like the, that uh, dragon ball z they have to power up first and then attack <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's got to say the chant again, <laughs> and basically he tries to call off the duel, but the adjudicator is not having any of it, so he decides to run into the arena and starts running and trying to free her from the chains. It's possible they got disqualified, but we're not 100% positive as we get towards the end of the episode. We'll, we'll explain more later. So obviously he tried to snap Mai out of this, like, I guess memory loss that she had and somehow like he talked about this dream that he talked about in i think episode basically the first episode of this part which i think was episode 40 and um somehow like uh he said in that dream like all my friends were around me like and he, he like specifically mentioned that yes you as well as my was also in that dream as well so i was also thinking about you as a friend and I helped snap out, uh, I guess, Mai from forgetting who Joey was. As you saw Joey come into view here, it was it was funny too because she had a little comment as uh, Joey was trying to pull the uh, restraints off her. It's like, that knucklehead, I knew he liked me. It's like, <laughs> of course he liked. So I thought that was pretty funny. It's a good comical moment and they did suspense respectfully do it as well. We had a bit of suspense almost to the point where we thought he was about to give her a big smooshy kiss. Yeah, but it was cute. It was cute. So that's why I'm giving that an up. Like, I kind of wanted them to kiss, but of course, it's, the, it's a kid's show. They're not going to show anything like that, any romance in a kid's show. But as an adult watching yet again, it definitely had that little tension. And like, I knew that Nicole had liked me. So like, obviously, it's more than just about being friends, I think, of course. I see America's not having none of it. So he's like, guys, whatever. Like, I'm, I'm still going to attack. Here's my attack. And with that, of course, we he finally la launches his attack. <laughs> and of course, Joey is trying to like, saying oh um, i'm gonna protect you i'm gonna block this attack so that way you don't feel the blunt of it and um my was like oh don't don't be hero like just go whatever and he says oh, I'm, I'm gonna stay regardless and of course a back of my mind she said oh thank you for you know doing this for me and of course that of course solidifies that friendship that they have for each other it's definitely a tactful way they showed the true friendship and power of it without being as cringy as uh Taya was yeah yeah definitely agreed definitely agreed and of course at the very last moment i don't know how he came he walked that fast but it looks like yugi blocked the attack instead of joey and he took blunt of that attack from the wing dragon of raw and passed out afterwards and with that, of course, it announced the winner of the third match, Merrick, officially, even though, I guess, is Yugi disqualified? Is Joey disqualified? It, it, they didn't really say. I guess they are. They, they might not. Might be plot armor. I don't know. But we'll talk about more about plot armor as we roll to the next scene here. So after taking the brunt force of Merrick's attack, Yugi passes out and this is where Joey and Mai are at their most unsafe because their biggest and best friend, rightfully so, has no way and is unconscious. Mm -hmm. And Merrick comes over very quickly and mm -hmm. basically hits Joey with a mind tap, making him free. And as he's frozen solid, Mai is just as more scared than ever to see both Yugi unconscious and Joey being in a frozen state that it kind of sets her in such a defensive position that Marek can seemingly sense it and thus takes his focus to her. Obviously, uh, at the end of the Shadow Realm, there's there's a promise that Marek had saying that I'm not going to break my promise. Since you lost, I will send you to the Shadow Realm. And of course, that scene was super dark. Like, as a as an adult, it was like, oh my god, super dark. But imagine watching it as a kid, like, wow, this guy is super evil. And what that realm was is, of course, here. She's stuck in this, like, prism, looking down at a beach of her friends, having a grand old time in the beach, not even thinking about my forgetting my And what made it even darker is the fact that her, her memories of them are going to slowly fade and fade as more of that sand starts pouring into the, uh, into the prism here. He basically says before he left, like, 
Oh, there's also something that you got for me, a card. And of course the Wing Dragon Raw. So he pulls it out. And of course that's when the sand starts falling and her memories of Joey and everyone else starts fading and fading. Super, super dark. But obviously for his character, it makes complete sense. I personally love it. It's, I think, not only an up, but a golden up. That was super, super nice. And it kind of fit as well to the whole theme of the three-parter, where like she, she wants to be included as friends. She finally got that glimmer of being included as a friend when Joey said that spiel with her. But now she's totally going to forget everything about her friends. Not, not just her friends, but also her family as well. And that is why we're giving that a golden up. Super dark, super realistic to what he would do as Merrick. And that just makes him that much more of an evil, badass character, I think. Uh, when you think about the antagonist of the entire series. Yeah, even Pegasus had some layer of uh, humanity to him. He kind of secretly inked the card. This guy's looking to take it out to the world and start causing some real harm. <laughs> now, all the while, we're back in, uh, we're back in, I guess, the real world here. Um, uh, because of plot armor, um, obviously, as we mentioned earlier, Yugi awakens. I guess he's able to absorb the mighty attack of a god and uh, be, be okay, so I guess that's pretty badass of, of Yugi. But all the while, during his entire scene uh, with the whole scripture here, uh, Kaiba uh, sent a task to Mokuba to kind of like uncover some of the secrets of the, uh, the, of the uh, Drifting God card. What are some of those secrets that, that uh, Mokubu found um, uh, for, for, uh, that he relayed to Kaiba, Liam? So with the phone call that, he, that Mokubu gives to Kaiba, he reveals that there's more than just that one inscription that Merrick has chanted out. He reveals that there are two, there's another one that has alternate effects mm -hmm. and it will take him time to transcribe and translate what they are. They don't give us exactly what it is, but yeah, it's, they it's, give it's us... It was vague. It was vague. Yeah. <laughs> but, but for the most part, obviously, uh, he's unlocking the secrets of the Wing Dragon of Raw as we speak. Without hesitation, Kaiba was like, guys, get out of the field. We're, we're, we're starting the next match right now. I'm dueling. Let's get on with it. And it's like, like, like Kaiba doesn't give a shit. <laughs> oh, like these other characters, like, guys, we have a term here. I'm going to win. I don't care if there's any emotional attachment to this. I'm going to win. I'm going to grab all the god cards. And that, that was, to me, that was, that was pretty badass. I was like, damn. He wants to get the ball rolling, basically. And, um... Yeah, so it ended with this nice little scene of Obelisk in the background. And yes, we're ready for the next match. And it's going to feature, of course, one of the God cards from the upcoming Structure decks, which we'll talk about more later in the video. But I love this little cliffhanger. Obviously, it gets right back to the action with Obelisk taking the forefront of the upcoming duel. So definitely, guys, this is a five-part episode. Obviously, two more parts left to go. Featuring, of course, Obelisk the Tormentor. So let's see exactly what Kaiba has in store for the next battle. And with that ending, I'm going to give that one a solid up as well. Not a golden up, but it was an up. And of course, as you can see, this was definitely a hype episode with seven ups to one down. So obviously a great episode. I actually love it. Uh, Liam, what can you tell me like uh, your opinion on the, the overall episode? I think they're chasing it really well. We've seen the beginning of one and then we saw from the cliffhanger and then in this episode we saw that dr we saw the dragon to full fruition mm -hmm. and then even after the post-match we get kaiba wanting to get straight into it rather than extend on the research side of it which they could have done with the storyline but overall yeah. like, i think oh boohoo my boohoo my but yeah forget my moving on right like that's how, how quickly uh kaiba went yeah, it, it was just another layer to his savagery that, you know, he's still a guy that has his fair share Priorities. of moments. He's not he's not just a smart dude, he's also as ruthless as an entrepreneur can sometimes be. Mm -hmm. So what's your overall rating? Uh, I give it an up. Uh, give I give it, it a big up because they've they panned to especially at the end here where we get a preview of what's possibly to come and it's another god card. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I have to totally agree with you. Like this episode is definitely getting, getting an up. And also it might be the first time as well, but an overall golden up for the entirety of this episode. So super, super great episode. And I can't wait to watch more. And that's how you can tell a great episode is when people want to watch more. There was a bit of that like, you know, that longing moment in the middle where they were like kind of dragging it. But at the same time, great, great suspense, great tension, great ending. And of course, great, I guess, um, payback i guess in that duel so definitely a golden up right here in this episode that pretty includes it guys this was a great episode obviously it ends on the third parter but we have two more left to go in these this five part series now i'm definitely excited i'm definitely so i hope you guys are as well if you guys are definitely give us a like as well in this video give us a subscribe as well if you guys want to watch more this as well as the unboxing for Obelisk Tormentor and Cypher Sky Dragon, uh, the structure decks coming out later in the month of June. Now, that's pretty much all I got. Until next time, this is Talos and Liam signing out. Peace.